I'm a tiny tiger in a brave new world gonna free this town If you didn't know about me already, well you know it with now Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Objectivist Girl. I know it's been a really, really, really long time, but I have been so busy, first of all, with trolling the Republican Party. If you haven't seen that video yet, you should check out Shire Dude's latest video and see what I've been doing here in New Hampshire. We've had a lot of fun and obviously you can tell that I haven't had much sleep from the lack of voice, but I have been also studying the Dow. And I think that the Dow is something that is very interesting and something that I want to go over with you guys um, because I think that the Dow actually fits in pretty well. So I'm going to go over the three key aspects that I think the Dow covers. So the first is how you should perceive the world. The second is how you should interact with the world. And the third is how the world should interact with you. So my friend Nick wanted me to do this video. so. Here you go, Nick. Get ready. Taoism versus objectivism. Actually, it's Taoism and objectivism, really. So the Tao teaches how to perceive things first. First of all, it says that everything has a nature or an essence. They call it an essence. So Ayn Rand actually said this herself. She agrees with Tao when she says that everything has a nature. It has a way. Uh, the Tao calls it an essence, and Rand calls it a nature, and, and Tao says several times that it has a nature or a way. What does this exactly mean? So what it means is that there are things that you can't particularly describe with language about it. So it's history, and it's, you know, special sound, and so if I try and describe a rock to you. Yes, I could say that it's round and it's hard and it rolls, but I would be misrepresenting what it is that that rock is. So I didn't explain its history because I don't know it. Everything has an essence and this can't necessarily be described in language. Now, language is a useful tool so that we're able to communicate, but we also need to understand that when we communicate things, we're also missing aspects of it. So the Tao and Objectivism both encourage people to not only learn things through language and through schooling and through all of those other things, but they also say that one should seek out knowledge themselves and not just learn it from books or individual people. You should discover it for yourself. So things like travel or, you know, camping, all those other things, they're very valuable to learning, to knowledge, in both Tao and Objectivism. The second thing that Taoism talks about is the nature of things being good or bad. Tao states, and I think Objectivism would agree, it doesn't say anything about this, but Tao would say that things are not really good or bad, in essence. And so we label things good or bad so that we're able to describe them and describe our emotions. And so, as I've stated several times, objectivism talks about how emotions are not good gauges of reality. That they are useful tools, but they are not your first go-to. And they should never be the first thing that you use to perceive reality. And so, uh, Taoism would agree with this. So, they don't, Taoism doesn't believe that things are good or bad. Taoism believes that things are. And so Ayn Rand says this several times, that things are, and what is, is, and we need to first accept what is, and then be able to work within the confines of reality to move it towards a direction in which we would like it to go. But in order to do this, we have to first accept what is, and then we need to figure out what it is that we are capable of doing through our own abilities and our own ideas and in our own situation. So we need to slough off things like good or bad, positive or negative, because when we look at something and we say that something is negative and that we need to find a silver lining, we're accepting the idea that is negative and it's already started out as negative. And that's just, you know, not the kind of world that you want to live in. You want to live in the kind of world where you accept what things are don't put emotion into them and just work towards creating whatever world you would like 
to live in, but you must do this through the confines of reality and accepting reality and your own ability and your own limitations. We talked just about how to act naturally to get things to the way we would like for them to be, and this moves us into the second part, which is how we should interact with the world. The Tao says that, that you should flow like water. Now, I know that sounds kind of hokey, um, but actually it's a really good point. So the idea is that when you flow like water, you fit into all the cracks and crevices of the world. And I think objectivism would agree with this. So basically, the idea is that nature, in order to be commanded, must be obeyed. And in order to be obeyed, it must be understood. And so we've talked about understanding. Objectivism is all about seeking knowledge. And so what you need to do is understand how the world works in order to be able to flow within it and work within its confines. So I don't want to spend my time, you know, pushing up a boulder up a hill that's far too heavy for me to push. Instead, I should go look for advice to help me be able to push this up the hill instead of just, you know, struggling needlessly against reality and that's what you're doing when you're trying to push a rock up a hill that you can't possibly push up a hill because it is too heavy you're struggling against reality so what i'm saying is that um don't struggle against what is embrace it and then work to change it in the smoothest way possible so the final concept that the Tao talks about is how the world should interact with you and it agrees with objectivism that people should be free because everyone has different knowledge and abilities and they understand the different essences of the world differently. And so in order to be able to live in the most effective and smooth way, we must be able to act according to our nature, which includes what we know and our abilities. To be confined in either thought or action is to be against the Tao and against objectivism. Understanding the nature of things requires acceptance, and this acceptance comes from a way of acting according to the understanding, and we need to be free to act to the best of our perception. So all of this acceptance helps us truly enjoy the universe because we have accepted what is. This allows us to find happiness and this is where you get to objectivism. So I like to say that the Tao is the precursor to objectivism. It helps you understand how to perceive reality so that you can live an objectively happy world. And so um, I want to thank Nick for asking me to do all this research. And thank you all for tuning in. And uh, remember, guys, knowledge is not for all men, but for those who seek it. So keep seeking.